Let's visit a man, a man belonging to God, who knew a thing or two about the windows of heaven. In Genesis chapter 7, we read, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was on the earth forty days and forty nights. And in Genesis chapter 8, it reads, Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. We've been told for countless years that the windows of heaven release finances and every kind of blessing we desire from God. But the truth is, the windows of heaven God speaks of simply release rain. Think about it. What falls out of the sky? Not money to pay our mortgage or our rent. Not our dream car, but rain. Rain, however mundane, is vital to life. It is literally water from heaven. When we make God's word out to say what God never intended, we deceive ourselves and those who hear us. False teachings, teachings of men, spread like gangrene. That well-versed passage in Malachi chapter 3 is surely the most infamous of false teachings about the windows of heaven. It reads, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I were not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Churchgoers have what the Bible describes as itching ears, and the teachings of men simply feed our desire to acquire money, wealth, and creature comforts. Are those things good and life-enhancing? Yes, but Israel paid tithes with food. Bringing one-tenth of their crops and cattle to the storehouse explains why there was a great need for rain. Plenty of rain makes the land fertile and brings lush vegetation and much-needed water for the nourishment of men and animals. When God said, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the trees, it is the Lord's, it is holy unto the Lord. We should see why Israel paid with what man can't recreate for himself. Israel needed God's help. They needed what only God could provide, and so do we. Without water, we couldn't live beyond three days. Our nations would experience droughts, famines, crop failures, poverty, and any and everything detrimental to life. In Ezekiel 34, 26 through 27, God says, I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing, and I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Then the trees of the field shall yield their fruit and the earth shall yield her increase. So by now you know that showers of blessings are simply rain showers. God knows the power of rain, the water that comes from heaven, that comes from above. Rain cleans our air, it waters our lawns, it refills our streams, lakes, and oceans. It nourishes every living thing. Those who preach the different gospel of today, which has produced countless pseudo-followers of Christ, have not been delivering the word of God with integrity. 
Rain literally is water from heaven. And it parallels Jesus, who referred to himself as living water, who from which you can drink and never thirst again.